Go okay. Um, I think this is time to get started. A few minutes early. Poke around a little bit. Um, so let's take a look. Last week, uh, threw in this lovely wardrobe, right? Uh, and facilitating that wardrobe, we put in some more um, cell types, I guess you call, call them. Um, let's turn on our debug lines. So we made it so that certain cells can only be accessed by players and certain edges can only be accessed by the ghost, right? So see, we have no, no edge here. Just set that guy up, make it special, connect specially. All right, so not only the ghost can go there uh, and only players can go in this cell. So we have this, this different type of connections. Um, this week, let's turn these guys off. Uh, this week, I'm going to try again to get breath first search going. Um, so right now, all moves are a single move. Um, let's let's watch a little, little progress bar. So all moves are just a single space, right? So the ghost can only move one move potentially through a wall. Player can only use, move one move. Um, everybody just moves one one unit, one square. So what I'd like to implement tonight is doing a breadth first search. So if I can take this ghost space, right, and I can I can very easily take whatever cell the ghost is in and find its neighbors, right? That's a that's a known list. The cell owns that list. Uh, what I want to do is say, all right, the ghost can now move two spaces. So instead of only being able to move to these, well, three, potentially four spaces of the direct neighbors, he can go two spaces. So he can jump here and then he can jump to the next space. So it's two moves to a distance of two. And we can do that through breadth first search. Um, it, breadth first search is just, we, it's a search algorithm that we can use on graphs. Um, that will let us build up a network of spaces. So I'm going to add all of the existing edges or the existing nodes to a list and then add each one of their neighbors to the list and making sure I don't duplicate anything. Um, and then once we go, you know, two spaces, three spaces, four, so what, however many spaces we want, I think we're only going to get to like two, maybe three. Um, we're going to return that list of, of distinct spaces and then the player can choose that space however far it is away as long as it's within the distance to move uh made it took a swing at it last week and, um kind of whiffed on it so little little research has happened hopefully this goes slightly smoother let's get our code up here uh and we need our game and we have our list and our turn calculate moves calculates our moves um, and we, we bundled this all up in get moves so we've got a start position so get moves start position is like where where you currently are you know are we a special like are we the ghost are we the player these are uh it's sort of exclusive but you know we'll refactor that sometime later and then i already put in this distance so right now distance is just hard set to one um let's go back to wherever calculate moves there's one so hard set to one and the other usage hard set to one so we can we can update that later but we just pass that distance into our get moves and then this is where we're going to do our breath first search uh here's the a very old way of doing it let's i think i think we can get rid of this code now uh you know it's just sitting there rotting um so right now if we have if we're a special you know we get the special neighbors if we're a player we just get the player neighbors um otherwise we get all the other ones um that could also use refactor but let's uh let's burn that bridge when we come to it right so breadth first search um we're gonna start with um, the regular moves. We're just going to do these. Right? So everybody can do the regular moves, whether you're a ghost or not. Um, we'll add all the regular moves, and then we'll add all the special moves, and we'll add all the, the player moves. I think that'll that'll work. Um, so this is just um, the current cell. So we get the cell's coordinates, get the neighbors, where the neighbor's not null, right? We put this in here because we had a null case. Um, and then we just select all the coordinates out. 
and we, we stuff those in. The trick in, in this breadth first search is we're gonna have an unvisited did a queue of type, uh, what is it, vector three int, right? So as we go, we're gonna start adding unvisited cells to this queue, right? And this queue is um, FIFO, first in, first out. So just like a queue, you stand in line, first person that gets in line is the first person that gets out of line. Um, so first thing we need to do for breadth first search is add uh, in queue, in queue. So queues you in queue and DQ. So in queue means put in, put into the queue and DQ means remove from the queue. Oh good, look, it's nice to see that we get a, we get bots. Uh, excellent. Um, NQ, where were we? NQ, and we're, we're just gonna start with the original coordinate um, because that's that's where we're gonna, where we're gonna start. Um, <clears throat> and now this is, this the whole breadth for a search is, is predicated on this queue and we, we add things to the queue and one by one remove them until we have no more things in the queue or we hit you know some sort of arbitrary limit like a distance. Um, so let's set up um, let's we'll, we'll, we'll do the, we'll do the distance management in a bit. Um, we can do while unvisited dot count. Whoop, greater than zero. All right. So this is the first time in. This is always going to hit because. Come on. Replace with count axis. All right. Um, threw me. It sure threw me a second for there. Threw me a, for a second there. Wow. And I can't talk tonight. That's great. We're doing good. Get a, get a nice sip of water. Um. So the first time into this. We're gonna add something to the queue and this is automatically gonna be true, right? So we're automatically gonna start processing the first thing. So let me you know, pull my cheat sheet, don't tell anybody. Um, we're gonna say the current coordinate is unvisited DQ, grab the first thing, right? So now our queue is empty. Um, and we're gonna visit, we're gonna visit this, this location. So we're gonna say, we're gonna actually do this. We're gonna grab the cells coordinates, grab all the neighbors where it's not known, and add all of these to a list. Unvisited dot in queue. I wonder if we can know. Uh, we can't just add the whole thing. I'm gonna do for each. I guess I guess it wants to do that. Uh, Vector three int. So we're gonna say grab all the cells and then for each cell, we're gonna do unvisited dot nq vector three lowercase vector three int. That's a really bad name. Um, let's rename it to uh, neighbor n e i g h b o neighbor chords. Perfect. Um, and we're gonna nq all the neighbor coordinates, right? So our, whatever our current cell is, we're gonna nq all of the neighbors, all of the regular neighbors. Um, I guess we put this logic in here, but we're gonna we're gonna push this off. We're gonna push this off. Um, remind us that we already did that. Uh, it's gonna get angry. All right. Well, let's just literally push it off by adding some white space. Um, cool. So now we enqueued all of all of these guys' neighbors. And let's also do, and then we're gonna go in and we're gonna pop something up, right? So we add all the neighbors, then we go back. We're gonna have something in there. Current, unvisited, take the current one, the, the next first one, and we're gonna add all of its neighbors. Oh, and that's why it wouldn't work. So we're gonna take the current current cell, first time through, it's gonna be, you know, our coordinates. Um, second time through, it'll be one of those neighbors. And we're gonna add all of those neighbors coordinates. Right. And we're going to keep going until these neighbors don't have any more um, neighbors to add, right? Um, 
or we, we just, we run out of distance. Right now it's just don't have any more numerators to add down. So we need to check that unvisited. Uh, uh, a total, wow, I am, I am blanking. Uh, we need to check that unvisited dot contains the neighbor coordinates, right? Um, if it doesn't contain the coordinates, right? Then we're going to add the coordinates, right? Because we don't want to, we don't want to double add it. Um, but we also need like our our output, our regular moves. So let's say let's let's steal this, and we're gonna we're gonna run this guy up here, and we're just gonna say new list. So this is empty, right? So if we haven't, if if the neighbor isn't already in the queue, and we haven't already visited it. And dot contains neighbor coordinates, right? It's not. So so we can't have visited already. Or we can't be sorry, we can't have already visited it, right? We've already added it as an as a potential move, but we also haven't already added it as you know we're going to get there eventually. We haven't unvisited. So if these two things are true. Right. Then we're gonna add it to the list, and then eventually, it'll it'll come out and um, mark it as as you know visit it. It's, it's part of our network. Um, we also want to do regular moves dot add and then current. So we're pulling we're pulling something off the queue, marking it as yes. We're gonna use this, adding all the neighbors. Um, and that'll keep going. That'll keep going until we've we've run out of things to uh, DQ, right? So if unvisited ever hits zero, right? That we've 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 ventured the space. We've covered everything, so we can we can return our our regular moves, and it will return a uh, list of of all the nodes, right? There's no there's no. Uh, links between these but it's it's basically going to tell us that um all of the all of the nodes that are connected to this node and we could set up some structure to find the shortest path to get there but um but we don't need that we're not going in that far we're not finding the the minimal distance between two points we're finding um all of the points within a certain distance so we need to add that logic now um, so we can say like far her dist equals distance, right? So we say like one, and we say and current distance is. Uh oh, this is where we're gonna we're getting in trouble. Current distance is greater than zero. So if we hit zero, if we hit zero, we don't need to check this here. Where we've gone as far as we can. Um, so we can say curd dist minus minus. So we've hit one space. You know, we've we've taken a step. So if this is two, we come in here, it becomes one, and then we add all of the two steps, and then we need to go through. We essentially need to go through all the neighbors that we add. And if we have steps left and cur dist is greater than zero. Okay. <laughs> and if we're close enough, right? So if if we still have a step to take, add the next step. If we don't have the next step to take, don't add it. I'm gonna have to start drawing, aren't I? Um on physics account greater than zero, right? So we're gonna go through and each time through, we're gonna subtract the div. Hmm. I, uh, I think this is gonna be, this is gonna be tricky. This is, this is, this is going real, this is almost going as bad as last week. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm surprised. Okay, let's start doodling. 
let's open up a yeah. um, sometimes when you have algorithms right especially graph like graph traversal algorithms uh, it's good to do do a doodle let's let's grab just just a whatever all right so let's say we have our node oh, I don't want green let's, let's get this black uh, we have our start node and then we have a couple of neighbor nodes right and I'm drawing this in the pattern that I want to go at but so we're gonna say you know these are all these are all connected like this Boop. Boop. all right so I'm gonna add this node to a list right so we have our first node Ooh, let's let's label stuff so one, two, three. Ooh, this is awful. Should should pull out the touchpad. Five, six, seven, eight. Oh, that's bad. Nine. Let's. Did I just do that nine backwards? How do you how do you do nine? Oh, that's a P. That's a nine. Goodness. Nine. <laughs> Let's do them way out of order. Ten, eleven. 12. Oh, that's an awful two. Back it up. 12. 13. Perfect. Um, so to start, I'm going to say we're going to start at one. So I'm going to enqueue. This is this is going to be our queue. I'm going to enqueue one, right? And then go in and I'm going to immediately take it back out, right? And we're going to say, we're going to add one to our this is our, our possibilities list. We're gonna, I'm gonna pull it over here, put it into our possibilities, but then I'm gonna enqueue all of its neighbors. And these don't have to be necessarily in order, but we need, let's say seven, three, 12, nine, right? So we add all three of these. And let's say our distance is two, right? So I've added this guy and all of its neighbors. So now I want to increment my distance to one, right? One, and say, this guy's in here. I'm gonna grab the top guy, seven, and put him over here, and say, is, is this number bigger than zero? Okay, add all of his neighbors. So I'm gonna add two, six, and eight. Oh my gosh, I cannot draw an eight. There we go. Two, six, and eight. That's all of his neighbors. Well, I'm also gonna do one, but one is in one is in my done list, so I'm not gonna add one. Cool, seven's done. We are going to DQ, we DQ him first, and then move him over. Probably just, just squiggle him out. Um, and then I'm gonna do three. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna DQ three, add him. and then add his neighbors. So five, two's already in there, one's already in there, four, right? But then when do we, when do we do this? When do we, when do we detect when to do this? I guess once we, once we process all of one's neighbors, then that's one step. But then the two step would be all of the extra neighbors. Hmm. All right. Uh, let's 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 chug along a little bit further. Um, added four. All right, we're doing three. Uh, we have five. We have four. One's already in there. Two's already in there. Great. Let's grab the next one. Yeah. See, I don't know when to decrement this because. It's it's got to be when when we're done processing like the previous like how do we know that this is a step? There, let's make them red. How do we know that like this is a step and then like our second step is these, right? Doop doop. Like these are all our second steps. Oop, one too many. That's a second step. That's a second step. 
How do we know that these are a second step? This one. This is a first step. And I think I just... So once we process the these, then we decrement. So, um, so let's say we have another special number, right? Um, so when we added the one, we say, okay, one has, oh, that's crazy. one has four neighbors. All right, let's process all of those neighbors. So it would be three, seven, 12, and nine, right? So it'd be here. Once we process four neighbors, then we decrement, right? And then we decrement and we start adding the neighbors. So when we add sevens neighbors, we're adding three. Nines, we add three. Twelve, we add three. Three, we add three, right? So that'd be 12. So our next magic number decrement would become 12, right? And so we'd have to go down to 12 things because between, like, these are all the one steps, right? And these are all the two steps and then so on and so forth. And these are all the three steps. Um, the, the, the tricky thing being, or the, the thing that's hard to, to recognize is that once we do the first node and add its neighbors, that's one, that is the one step. I think we can do this. Let's, let's try this, this magic, you know, uh, decrement after processing X number of neighbors. All right, we got a plan. Uh, let's write it down real quick. Um, Counts neighbors added in each step. Decrement distance when number reached. There we go. So, so this cur distance, right? And then we have var decrement count. And then we can say chords dot now oh, we have to get the neighbors um, which is the current it's it's these it's these guys so we're gonna do we're gonna do this twice dot count Okay, so cells get neighbors where it's not null. Oh, can we just... No, oh, count. Count the ones that are not null. Okay. Mm -mm. And then that gives us our, our breadth first, right? So we're, 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 we're expanding out our ring of influence, or a ring of counting. Let's make this guy purple. So then these guys would get all of these neighbors, right? And that would be two. Let's, let's try this. I think this will work. You know, nothing like rederiving a very well-known algorithm that you could just pull a library in, um, you know, for the funds. Ooh, getting, getting texted. Perfect. Um, okay, so our first decrement count is going to be our first cell's, you know, neighbors. How many neighbors does this have? How many, how many should we wait until we decrement our distance? So, we add all our neighbors, and then we want to process that many more. So what if we do plus one? We're gonna be off by one. I just I just have a feeling. Um, so every time we DQ something, we're gonna say deck count minus minus. Um, add it, do do do. And then we can say if deck count equals zero, right? If there's zero, if we've hit our limit then we need to do drop the distance uh, oh we need car distance cannot type then we drop our distance and then if our distance is zero
we don't process anymore. We're gonna break. Right. I'm gonna get out of here. Um, so if we've gone two steps, you know, essentially, and we just we took our last step, we decrement, we'll finish, and that's that's the end of our that's the end of our property, uh, end of our party. So regular moves and. So let's see if we can we can we can we can do to this one up. Okay, first step. Our magic number is gonna be four. Right? Four. And then plus one, right? Five. So we're gonna process we're gonna add that first one. We're gonna process it. We're gonna decrement down to four. Uh, and then we're gonna process, we're gonna pop. We're gonna pop three, seven, nine, and twelve. So it's four, we're gonna pop that three, two, one, it's zero, right? Um, oh, and then should we just take, okay, it's not the number of neighbors, it's the number in the queue, right? Because we've added, we've added these, we've added, we've added all the ones we pop neighbors, and then we need to decrement. So we need to count the current, the current neighbors. So when we hit zero, <laughs> we take the count of the current unvisited, and those are the next steps. So every time we clear out, essentially, like we add a bunch and clear them out, add a bunch, clear them out, add a bunch, clear them out, and that's what's going to give us our our point at which we we decrement. Cool. Nothing like changing multiple times. All right. So. We're gonna DQ. And we're gonna say that our decrement count is zero. We're gonna start with zero. So we want we want to come up with a new one. Let's. Or we have to start at one. Um, if our decrement is zero, a zero, subtract our cur distance, and then we need the deck count to equal the unvisited dot count. So once we visit all the ones we've added, we have to visit all the rest of the ones we've added, but don't go any further. All right. Let's try that. Um, four. So if we don't break, if we still have distance left, you know, go one more step, add the one more step. This we don't need to check anymore. Boop, remove all of those. decrement because this the unvisited count is going to be different because we're going to add a bunch before we get back here so let's try this let's let's see how well this does um, I wonder if we're going to add like just some tests to to highlight like you know do, do show me show me two from this one show me three from this one um, these guys ooh, let's just we're only doing regular moves right now uh, yeah, let's let's do a quick board editor and uh, and do some tests. I think that'll be good as we do some some scripty boys. Ooh, we can we can also speed this up. So another trick I learned: um, if you keep all your scripts in your script folder, right? These are all in the same uh, assembly as like every other script that comes with Unity. Um, so if we go in here and we create a new uh, assembly definition, and we call this like main scripts, yeah, it does the name really doesn't matter. Um, we can go in here and say, like this this essentially cordons off um, all of the all of our scripts, so that when we change these, we don't have to recompile every other script. Um, what that does cause is our namespaces go out of space. Um, which we just have to add them. Cell could be not found. I think that's because we have scripts all over the place. Drop these in the scripts. Let it recompile. Let's see, clear. All right, naughty, we need naughty attributes. I, I really like naughty attributes. Uh, is it constrained? No, it's this guy. 
We just need to add it. Not yet, it treats core. And that one should clear that up. So we need to tell, like, because Naughty Attributes lives in our our packages that we added, um, we have to tell Unity this assembly references that assembly. Um, please include it. Yep. Uh, mathematics. Oh, I haven't seen that one before. Nope. Math. So some of these should get cleared out. Right. Unity dot math. Yeah, it's gonna. Oh, let's let's just remove the unused ones, just so we don't have to include them. Uh, that can stay, I guess. Or get components. Why is get component? Oh, this is this is the editor. Uh, this was probably a bad move. Widely regarded as a bad move. Uh, boop, main scripts. We're going to add text mesh pro. Text mesh pro. Apply. And this should hopefully speed up uh, reloads, right? So, so it's only going to recompile all of these dependent pieces of code and not every single script ever needed. TMP text, what, what is it in? Do, 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 TMP, oh, it's in TMP Pro, not Text Mesh Pro. Let's see if we can add that. TMP, nope, that's Mesh Pro. Uh, could it be in the editor? It might be in the editor. No. Apply. Get component. Oh, it did clear it up. Uh, get component for object. What is this in? This is in the editor. Why is it angry about that one? Because our editor folder is inside. See how these are all. The, this is all of our text mesh pro. These scripts. So we just included these scripts, but like not these other five thousand script packages uh, scripts scripts you're in here it's weird that I can't find it um, active object what is that in maybe we just need to include the unity editor check that guy Let's say it's also an editor no I was thinking real hard and uh, we did it excellent so now this should theoretically um, compile slightly faster we could break this down um, so like let's say you have tons of scripts right like so I have editor scripts and board scripts blah 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 blah, blah. Um, you can you can even subfolder these like I can create an editor um, subfolder or subassembly and if I modify an editor script right it'll only compile those it just it reduces the surface area of of your com compilations okay what were we doing? Uh, we are going to make a board editor, right? Because board contains, was it board or, let's see if this is still angry at us. Shouldn't be. So board contains this uh, get moves that we want to test. So, oh, you know what? I, I think if we lock up Unity, uh, we can't really do a whole lot. There it goes. Let's get her to run one more time. I mean, I think that's faster. Could be faster. I think it's faster. Ooh. Yep. 
Oh, uh, yep. We're, we tried. We are going to delete that. We are going to compile everything again. Clear this guy out. You certainly do contain uh, a reference, but did I like delete? Oh man, if this was just like. Oh, why does. Why does this require visual scripting? That's. A little weird. All right, maybe it did work. So, burn five minutes. That's okay. Back to the task at hand. We are going to create a new script called Board Editor. Open this guy up. All right, and. I'm gonna steal. I'm gonna steal from the cell editor. Uh, we need on inspector GUI. No. Nope. Oh, we need to change the type. Um, it is of type editor, and it is a custom editor. We do type of board. And we don't need multiple. That's fine. Uh, on inspector. Vector GUI, draw defaults. Is this, I wonder if these are the same. Let's 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 yank that guy out of there. Um, let's do a a button, right? We can uh, if GUI layouts dot. Oh, maybe we could do. Let's see if we can stick a. Uh, a vector three in there, right? This is all gooey stuff, right? Uh, vector two, that's a scroll view. That's not what I want. I want like an attribute. Now, um, do, do, do. let's grab, oh man, I'm like, I'm not doing so great for, Board equals board, 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 target. All right. Um, we're going to say, we're going to hack this. Here, I'm so going to hack this. Um, public vector three int test position. All right. Now we can say B dot test position. Great. Um, you can say B dot get, uh, was it get moves? Get moves from B dot test position. False, false. We're gonna start with one, right? Uh, home. We're gonna say var n equals n for neighbors. We're gonna say get moves. We're gonna go one. And then this will give us a list of ints, but conveniently, our board positions are still our world positions. I'm just gonna double check that. If it ever reloads. Okay, so this is move on one. Uh, that looks right. Okay, jump back in. All right, now we're gonna do for each. Neighbor in neighbor. Oh, and vector three. In. Uh, come on, stop being so helpful. I am going to draw a gizmo. Draw sphere at that position, and it is going to be 0 0.7 size. Okay, so now when we click on the board, this editor should run, and we should see one space from whatever whatever um, our test position is. So if the uh, test position is null, right, we're just going to return. You know, get, get out of there. We're going to do low guard. Uh, always false. Well, all right, well, it's always false. Don't really need it. That's okay. Do, do, do. 
I think it'll pop up with the 001 first, because that'll be like the default. Board, test position, 000, maybe. Do you see any? Do we see any spheres? I don't see any spheres. Ah. Uh, no. Um, let's drop this guy in Andragismosa. Boop, 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 boop. Uh, Inspector Gooey, go back into the board. Might not have even needed on draw gizmos. Drop you in here. I can just say. Just draw a sphere. Made it a little too hard on ourselves. That's all right. Now we know. What we know, I have no idea. So, test position zero. No, oh, dang it. Not seeing anything. I don't think it was dr they're drawing like all over the prillies. So, X one. No. Uh, oh, no reference exception. There we go. That's why. Reference not an instance of an object. Get moves. Oh, can we not use this? Essentially statically? Right. Uh, if so, let's see. Cells get set up. Yep. And build. No. No, no, no. Something's, I am I am doing something very wrong. All right, build, get components to grabs all the cells, drops them in, here, adding cell. Okay, this just grabs them all when we build. Uh, but we don't build because we're not in the we're not running, right? We never call build. So let's do. Just add a button. Let's see what happens. Uh, this is this is the naughty attributes. So we can we can just say make this method a button in the inspector. Don't have to write too much custom stuff. All right. Did it not? Uh, it's probably because it's flipping out. Alright, it's not the test position one. If cells equals no return. And another guard, why not? Open you. Yeah? Maybe. Still do it. Uh doesn't mm, what is null it's got to be it can't be cells cells contains key cords this is we're passing that can't be null but cells has to be and like if it doesn't contain the key it just gives us a new list Can I can I debug it? Let's try. Hopefully this uh, this won't blow up too badly. Did it break? Maybe have to. Yep, there it is. All right. Let's take a look. This cells is null. Huh. Why is cells null? 
Andra, if cells equals null. This has this is probably something like editor versus play mode. Right? Because we explicitly check if cells equals null return. Which this isn't. Let's, let's do this. Play. Jump back to Unity. Recompile. Jump back out. up there. Let's see if we can just release it. Alright, there we go. Oh, no, deploy mode. Okay. Here. Click on the board. Alright, yep. Here, null. Attach the debugger. Alright, you're attached. Jump back to Unity. Cells continue. Yeah, why is cells null? Cells should not be null. Let's say um, cells equals null, or it doesn't contain the key. Maybe? Just give us a new list. Give us an empty list. See if we can just get rid of the null refs. Do, do, do. Clear. Click away. Click back. Okay. No more exploding. But we're not doing anything. And my build button doesn't show up. Button. Do build. Let's see if this does it. Watch some, uh, some bars, test positions in there. All right. This could also be messing with it. So, delete. A couple more progress bars. There's our button. Okay. Do the build. Nope. Oh. oh. Excellent. Okay. Uh, what if we switch this guy to zero? Nice. One that's probably off in you know the ether somewhere. Zero. We need Z one. Great. Great. Okay. Now, now we're cooking with gas. Okay. So by passing one, get moves one is only returning the one cell. So, let's try adding one. You know, three hardest things in computer science is naming things and off by one errors. Do the build, ooh. All right, we, we went from one to all. Uh, at least we know this is traversing the entire space. Let's see. Cardist. We do decrement that. That is so weird, though. Cardist. Cardist equals zero. Break. And then we, we just return. We just return those moves. Why does it work once? So if Curdist is one, right? We pass in a one. It DQs the only thing that's in there. Removes the deck count, which is now zero. Right. So it is zero. We subtract one from Cur distance. We reset the decrement count. Cur distance is zero. Out. Okay. If cur distance is two, we deck count that goes to zero. Cur distance becomes one. It's not that. We add a whole bunch. Right, but the unvisited should be 
Oh, the unvisited account should be zero. And we check, we check, we hard check if it's zero, not less than zero. So this becomes negative one. That count is negative one is not equal to zero. Okay. Uh, that's the problem. So we need to add these as long as we have distance. Let's, let's just, just add a bunch, right? So your, the unvisited count will always be, you know, the neighbors. See if that does it. Watch a couple more progress bars. Make sure we're all up to date. Click on the stuff. Do the build. All right. So we got the one. Ooh, one. Now let's see what happens if we start the distance plus one. Do a quick rebuild. I'm going to click away and then click back into it. We'll see what we're doing. Bam! That's it. There we go. Perfect. Nailed it. All right. Moment of truth. We are going to modify public int test dist. Uh, and we can do stuff like, so for funsies, we can do like a range here. We can say one. All right, and this will force test to be, you know, one to ten. Um, useful warning: you're writing, you know, more useful scripts. But uh, where do we call do build? Boop, 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 boop. Get moves. Test distance. All right, feeling good about this, which means it's gonna blow up. Test is all right. Start at zero, one. I'll get my slider. Let's make this two. Ho oh, ho! There we go. That's it. And check it out. So because we're doing the regular moves, we can't we can't move through this wall. So like, despite this being technically, if that wall wasn't there within two, we can't move there. Let's three. Nice. Four. Five. See how it's starting to wrap around the walls? That's great. Up to six. Now we're starting to get into this room. So you have to go six steps to get in there. Hey, yes. Oh my gosh. That that feels pretty good. Uh, and we've got a nice cool uh, cool little visualizer to dad. Um, we can certainly make this more interesting, you know, change the colors. Blah 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 blah. Uh, for now, I'm just gonna I'm just gonna comment it out. <laughs> uh, that was that was a lot. Um, select all you. Boom. Hide. So we verified. Like, yay, this works. Let's make it so the player gets to move two spaces, and uh, everybody else only gets one. Uh, no, we need game, game, game. Uh, boop, 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 player, add a new player, do the turn, we do the player first, and it moves calculate, right, and I'm, I'm going to verify that that, so get, do moves, the last one is distance, slap a two in there, I'm going to save, I'm going to go back to unity, going to hit play, it's going to be great. after a couple of uh, progress bars. Okay, uh, move the skeleton. Oh, oh, I think we got him wrong. Look, the skeleton can move two spaces. The player can only move one, but ghost can move two. Ooh, this is a very hard game now. Um, so now, like, essentially you can move diagonally, right? You can boop, move over. This is uh, used and um, because because we're not calculating, we're only doing the regular moves, right? Um, the ghost can move into the, the warehouse, and he can't move through walls. Let's fix that. Whew, man, I don't know. That, that feels really good. Got it, got it done. Uh, sort of, most mostly. Uh, 
Uh, we're like 80% of the way there. Um, only had to throw some null checks in, you know, hack some stuff together, uh, do a little calculations. It was good. Um, <clears throat> so here we add, we need to do the, the special moves and if you're the player moves. So, and we did these separately before, right? We added all the regular moves, and then if you were special, we also added these guys. And if you were a player, we also added these guys. Um, we can we can continue to do that. We and I think is it gonna be? Yeah. Uh, so we get the regular moves. Yeah, let's let's just try it. Um, let's steal some code. Control C, Control V. We're gonna add if you're special. Go, ahead, go down there. Ooh, that I did not like that. Let's uncomment. Then copy. All right, if you get special, we're gonna replace, yeah, we're gonna replace that guy. Pop him in here, regular moves, add range, cell, chords, that's the same, and then instead of neighbors, it's special neighbors. Where, do, 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 where it's not null, select the coordinate. Boop, 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 and then if, we haven't visited yet and it's not already in the moves, add it. And do the same thing for player. Alright. X and delete all you guys. Same idea. Uh, we are going to steal this for each. And I'm sure there's there's probably a way simpler way to do this, but Chords to list. Yep. There we go. Um, looks good. Let's let's give her a go. Let's give it a try. Because because this is all based on like how long this queue is. Um, so if this queue is like super long, right? With the unvisited count. You know, we can add a whole bunch of neighbors. Um, and it, it'll automatically adjust. It doesn't, it, the algorithm doesn't care if the neighbors were added because you're a ghost or because you're a player. The neighbor care, the algorithm cares if you've just added that neighbor yet. Uh, oop, I opened the wrong one. Okay. Zombie. Cannot move through the wall. Player. Cannot move through the wall. So you get the ghost. Uh, of course, it's going to get the skeleton again. Player's going to move here. I'm testing this guy. Get the skeleton again. All right, player, yes, he can move into the player only. The ghost, look at that, look at that. He can move through the wall, take a couple of steps through the wall. Uh, you know, he's, he's flying all over the place now. Um, we're gonna move, we're gonna, the player's gonna run away. I'm gonna make sure that the ghost cannot go into the wardrobe. Of course, we get the skeleton player, come on more skeleton. Also, the skeleton cannot move onto the ghost space, right? Because enemies cannot move onto other other enemies. Other enemies spaces. The ghost? Oh, I guess we messed up a little bit there. Figure it out. Um, but that's that's most of the rules. I think that's pretty good, right? Hopefully, maybe. Alright, let's see. Skeleton can't move there, but probably because the ghost is there. The skeleton and the ghost use the, the same code, so I don't know why I'm trying to check them both. It doesn't really matter. But yeah, it's kind of fun just like sliding these guys around. Yeah, keep moving there. Okay, let's see what is up with those guys. Um, could it be that? These, these connections got messed up? Yeah. I think this connection got messed up because look, there's like a ghost one into here 
I thought these guys were supposed to be a different color. Yeah, these are just regular neighbors. Yeah. I don't know why that didn't get saved. So we are going to clear all the neighbors. Ghost can't move in there. I'm going to do those two. Uh, we are going to make this player only. Let's do three. And player only. Okay, so it wasn't a code problem. It was a uh, configuration problem. Excellent. Nailed it. Uh, I'm just going to go double check real quick. All right, so the player, the player can move on to there. The skeleton can't move that far. Skeleton, great. Skeleton cannot move through walls and he cannot move on to that guy. The skeleton's gonna pass, he's gonna hang out. Perfect, oh. This is awesome. Uh, for some funsies. Whew, let's, uh, let's just go crazy. Uh, let's, let's make the player run super fast. If this is the player guy, uh, he can move. Well, let's let's say the player can move for, uh, five. You know, he's he's booking it. He's real scared. Give her a run. Uh, the ghost. All right, ghost is gonna creep up on you. Whoa! Look at that. You can run all the way out. And around. Nice. Okay, so future enhancement um, is going to be we're going to record those paths, right? Right now, it's just it gives me a list. There's no um, order that that the nodes were discovered in, um, but we can we can say like each node has a list of moves to get to that node. Um, so, for example, like this corner. Um, right now we just shoot over there, right? And it, we could move here, 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 right? Um, but that's not shown. We're just saying we can move here, move your piece there, which, you know, easy. Um, but as these are discovered, right? So to move here, if we move cell by cell, we would have to move to either this one or this one, then to this one, then to this one, then to this one. Or, you know, if we had enough moves, you go out and around. Um, but... Just moving straight there is going to be fine because I think we're going to put in the rules like you can pass through, right? you can pass through an enemy or an enemy can pass through you uh, without penalty, right? So we can just run straight through that ghost. No big deal. He's a ghost. He won't mind. Um, awesome. Future enhancement. Do it later. Whew. Um, got that out of the way. So next thing is I want to do like instead of having... Um, you know, just arbitrary, like, setting the distance you can move. We're going to do cards. Um, and I want to have a deck of cards, right? So let's let's just start sketching it out. Uh, we'll, we'll, just, we'll just straight up call it a deck. Uh, and it's I'm not going to have it be a mono behavior. All right, we could just have a pure class. Kind of nice, because it's all data. Right? Um, and we can have a card. Um, and so a card is going to be, you know, there'll be types of cards, but let's say right now there's only, there's only movement cards. And so, and, uh, move distance, right? And so we can construct a deck that is a list of card objects, cards, and then we can, in a constructor, uh, oop, oh, oh, generate constructor. cards equals new list of cards and then we can say cards dot add mu new card and just do a quick uh oh a quick constructor oh, generate constructor add the move distance perfect uh, so you know one and we can just do do a whole bunch of these. Do the simplest thing. Nice. Uh, boop. 
uh, and we can say, you know, like a two, a three, let's add another two, add another three, uh, add a bunch of ones, right? So these are all discrete cards. Um, and then in the deck, we can say, public card, draw a card, and it just, it will pop a card. Um, let's do this, let's do this with Q, messing with Qs tonight. Um, Q of cards, and we can say the draw pile, and private, we just do a list here for the, for the discard pile. Uh, but let's do a queue, just in case we want to preserve that card, discard. Right, and then draw pile equals new queue of cards, discard pile equals new queue of cards. Right? And let's just do draw pile. And this is going to, yeah, that's going to, it's going to mess mess stuff up. So I'm gonna control G, uh, alt G, nope, nope, nope. Try again. Control G, control shift G, nope. There's a multi-select that is gonna make this much easier if I can remember the command, but it's different between Windows and, there we go. Uh, now we can do draw pile dot nq a new card and then we can draw a card and we can say draw pile dot dq our card equals drop that by q and we just add it to the to the discard pile right and then we can return the card something like this um, so now we have, we, we can represent, you know, two decks of cards, or two piles of cards, and we can draw and we can shuffle them. Um, I wonder if you can randomize a, uh, a queue. I mean, that's kind of against the idea of a queue, but, um, we'll figure out a way to do it. Um, and we can also represent these as scriptable objects, right? And then a card isn't just, you know, doesn't just hold a number, it's just a data structure. At that point, that is an asset inside of our project. Um, and we can, we can mess with those. <laughs> uh, and then in our game, the way we would use it is just private deck, deck. Uh, and then we just deck equals new deck, bam. And then every turn, let's just simulate uh, every turn. So at the beginning of a turn, we're gonna say deck dot draw card, card equals draw card, and then we can just you know uh, debug log it. Uh, how we do card dot move dist. Right? And so this will draw a card, but also uh, put it in the discard pile. That doesn't feel too good. Uh, void discard card and and here we'll just do boop. Make this simpler. We'll just pass. Pass some data structures around. Inline this guy. Inline, inline. Oh, come on. Inline. There we go. Did it. Um, and then when we're done with the card, right, we can do deck dot discard card. And that's how we would use it. And treat them just as, you know, actual cards that we're going to pass around. around the uh, board, pass around the table. All right. Oh, console, there we go. So I pulled the one, pulled the two, pulled the three, you know, 
now these are these are cards that we can mess with. There's gonna be a problem when we get to the bottom of the deck, uh, but uh, you know that's a problem for another time. Um, but yeah, I think that's good. Um, I think next week we'll uh, we'll expand on this. We'll start building this out as an actual uh, card deck system. Um, and then the user can have, you know, up on their screen, we're going to start doing some, some real UI. Ooh. Um, they'll just have, have an image of, of a card up on the screen. Go 2D, right? And switch to this guy. And it'll just be, I, I'm thinking like just somewhere down in the bottom, right? They can, they can mouse over a card and it'll pop up. Um, or if they have like multiples. You know, and then this pass button will move over. Um, they'll mouse over it, and it'll pop up, and they can like click on it and be like, "I want to play this card." And then they can move, you know, three spaces, or they can, you know, move move the ghost again, or you know, so something something fun. We can start implementing all our rules. Um, but I think that's that's gonna be it for this week. Um, a little shaky there, you know, beginning and middle, and a little bit at the end too. Uh, but I think we got some good some good code done. Um, got a really cool little editor thing. Probably probably post a nice picture of that uh, with some colorful bubbles and stuff. Just to just to say, haha, I did I did what I said I was going to do mostly without struggling too hard. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm excited about putting cards in. So I will see you guys uh, next week. And if you want to get notified when I go live, don't forget to subscribe. And if you're from the future, hello. Also, subscribe, please. Uh, have a good night. See ya.